All right, everybody, welcome to the video here for lessons number one and two um, for geometry's unit four. So with parallelograms, there's a lot of properties that we need to know. Uh, using those properties will be important. You'll notice a lot of these questions have different typeface. These are actually um, previously used regions questions. So you can see how they're going to kind of ask them on the regions exam or even on my tests. So for question number one, it tells us that we have a parallelogram. As soon as I see parallelogram, I know all five properties are true. So it says, which must be true. So if this is a parallelogram, I know the opposite sides are parallel and congruent. I know the diagonals bisect each other. I know the opposite angles are the same size. So there's a lot that I know. So it says BE is congruent to CE. Well, those aren't going to be congruent in a parallelogram. So that's not true. Angle BAE, which I'll use a different color for here. Angle BAE is here, and angle DCE is here. Well, if these two lines here and here are parallel to each other, that's going to create that Z shape we're looking for. Those are alternate interior angles. That's always true. That's my answer. Why are the other two not true? AB is congruent to BC. Those are consecutive sides. That's not true for a parallelogram. DAE here is congruent to CBE, CBE here. Those aren't alternate interior angles, so neither of those work. Number two. Number two tells us that, again, we have a parallelogram. It tells us that angle DCB is 120. This whole angle is 120. Meaning this whole angle is 60. Why do I know that? Consecutive angles are supplementary. So if I take 180 and subtract 120, I'm left with 60. Now it also tells us that angle 1 is 45 degrees. So if we take like a zoomed in picture here of this area. So this area is angle A, D, C, with an angle coming through, a line coming through, not bisecting, just cutting it into two parts. One angle is 45. The other angle we don't know. And this whole angle together is 60. So if I take 60 minus 45, I get 15. So angle 2 is 15 degrees. Now notice it says to explain your reasoning. So to explain your reasoning, I'd have to say angle C plus angle D equals 180. Therefore, angle D equals 60. And you'd want to explain that in words. So then you could say angle 1 plus angle 2 must be 60. And if angle 1 is 45, angle 2 must be 15. That's kind of my work I'm going to show. Number 3. Again, parallelogram. All five properties are true. SV is x plus 3. VU is 2x minus 1, and TU is 4x minus 3. Well, if this is a parallelogram, this side and this side, they're the same size, meaning they're equivalent to each other. x plus 3 is equal to 4x minus 3. So if we do some math here, some algebra, I get 3 equals 3x minus 3, add 3, and I get 6 equals 3x. So x is 2. But they don't want x. They want sv. So if sv is x plus 3, and we now know x is 2, last time I checked, 2 plus 3 was 5. There's your answer. Number four says in the parallelogram, again, parallelogram, we see that this one side keeps going to create kind of like a trapezoid. And it tells us that LM and LN are the same. It says angle J is 47, meaning this angle is also 47. And since KL and JN are parallel, I know by alternate interior angles, that angle is also 47. Now, there's other ways you could have done it. You could have found this angle here and use supplements, but we don't have to. 
Now, it doesn't want angle M of the triangle, it wants angle N. But since it's isosceles, I know the base angles are the same. So angle N is 47. Now, if you just take the triangle, every triangle has three angles that add up to 180. So if I take 180 and subtract away the two 47s that I already know, I should be left with the angle that I want, which winds up being 86. So then I can say angle M L N, this angle up top, is 86 degrees. Number five has a typo in it. All right, it says it's a parallelogram, which is good. I know this angle is 100. But there's no way of me finding these little angles here and here or here and here without knowing more about this picture. So the only thing you really could have done here would have been say angle A is 100. Angle B, the whole angle B is 80 because these two are supplementary to each other and these two are supplementary to each other. So angle D is also 80. That's B. All right, moving along here to lesson number two. All right, two videos in one. All right, lesson number two. The first question says, in a parallelogram, we have a diagonal that's drawn. So first thing we want to do here is we want to draw a picture. When I draw a parallelogram, just make it look like a slanted rectangle. When you're labeling it, start in the bottom left corner and go clockwise around the whole shape using the letters that they provided for you in order. It then says AC is drawn. So let's draw it. It tells us that BCA, BCA is 4x plus 2. And it says DAC is 6x minus 6. It also says that BAC is 5y minus 1. And DCA is 7y minus 15. Now, in this picture, because it's a parallelogram, I know alternate interior angles are the same. So those two angles I just labeled in red are equal to each other. 6x minus 6 equals 4x plus 2. Do some algebra. And we get x equals 4. Well, if x is 4, I can plug that in. And I can say angle B, C, A is equal to 16 plus 2, or 18 degrees. It doesn't ask us for that angle, but it'll help us in the future. Now, the next set of angles that are also alternate interior are the ones I just labeled in green. So I can then say 5y minus 1 equals 7y minus 15. Do some algebra, move that 5y. So I have negative 1 equals 2y minus 15, or 14 equals 2y, or y equals 7. Well, if y is 7, I then can plug that in and find angle. Now, we found b, c, a, so let's find angle a, c, d. All right, so if I do 7 times 7 is 49. 49 minus 15 is 34 degrees. These two angles together make angle C. So if I add 18 plus 34, I get 52 degrees. Now, it doesn't ask us for angle C, so why am I finding angle C? Well, I know angle C and angle B are supplements to each other. So if I want to find angle B, I just have to do 180 minus 52 which is going to be 128 degrees. So angle B is 128 degrees. Number two gives us this shape. It says it's a trapezoid. Trapezoids we know have opposite sides parallel to each other, right? So RA is parallel to ST. I also see a bunch of triangles here, so we should be able to find a bunch of angles in this picture. So <clears throat> if this is a trapezoid, I can find this angle, it's a triangle, RSA. So if I do 180 minus 68 minus 47, I get 65. So this angle is 65. Not one that they want us to find, but one that we can quickly get because we know about triangles. Now, another special property about a trapezoid 
is at consecutive angles that go from base to base, right? So if I take a look at a trapezoid, angles that go from base to base, like angle one and angle two, they're supplements to each other. So I know that this angle of 68 and this big angle S are supplementary. So if I do 180 minus 68, that's gonna give us 112. Well, that's all of angle S. So if I take 112 and subtract away the part of angle S that I know, 47, I also get 65. Well, why would that be 65? Alternate interior angles. Now that's one of the angles that the S is for, AST. So I can say angle AST is equal to 65 degrees. Now to find angle SAT, again, I have a triangle. So if I take 180, subtract 65, and subtract 48, I wind up getting the last angle of that red triangle I just highlighted, which is 67. So then I can say angle SAT is 67 degrees. Number three, determine which statements are true. If the statement is false, replace one word. All rectangles are parallelograms. That's true. A rectangle is just a special type of parallelogram. All parallelograms are rectangles. That's false. Now, there's a couple ways you could change this. I could say all parallelograms are quadrilaterals. That's probably the way I'd write it. But you could say all parallelograms are trapezoids. You could have even changed parallelograms to the word squares. That would have worked too. All trapezoids are parallelograms. Again, false. We could again change parallelograms to quadrilaterals. All squares are rhombuses. True. All rhombuses are rectangles. False. I would change rectangles to parallelograms. Number four says the perimeter of a rhombus that has diagonals of 30 and 16. So the first thing I want to do is draw a rhombus. All right, remember when you're drawing a rhombus, it's kind of like a square that's slanted. If a diagonal here is 30 and a diagonal here is 16, rhombuses are parallelograms, so they bisect each other. So the 30 gets cut into pieces of 15 and 15, and the 16 one gets cut into pieces of 8 and 8. Now, another property of a rhombus that I hope you remember is that the diagonals are perpendicular. So if I look, if I take one of these triangles, so if I just take one of those triangles out of the picture, it's a right angle with two legs of 8 and 15. Well, how could I find this missing side? Well, that's a throwback question of something you did way back in elementary school or middle school. Pythagorean theorem. So I could do 8 squared plus 15 squared equals x squared. x I'm representing as one side of this rhombus. Do some math. 64 plus 225 or 289 equals x squared. Square root both sides. I get 17 equals x. Now, 17 is not my answer. 17 is just one side of this rhombus. Well, what do we know about a rhombus? All sides are the same. So if I want to find the perimeter, I would say 4 times 17, which is 56. Number 5. So as which reason could be used to prove a parallelogram is a rhombus? So to prove something's a rhombus, we're looking for something specific about a rhombus. In a rhombus, the diagonals are not congruent. Opposite sides are parallel. That's true for a parallelogram. It's true for a rhombus. It's also true for a rectangle. It's also true for a square. So that's not specific enough to prove it's a rhombus. The diagonals are perpendicular. Well, that's true for a rhombus. Opposite angles are congruent. True for a rhombus, but also true for all the other parallelograms. So 3 is the only one that's specific to a rhombus. So 3 is your answer.
which quadrilateral diagonals that always bisect its angles and also bisect each other? So bisecting angles, that's a special property. That property is not true for parallelograms. It is not true for rectangles. And it's definitely not true for isosceles trapezoids. He's the weird uncle that doesn't really have much that's in common. So again, we're talking about rhombus here. Number seven says, if the diagonals of a quadrilateral do not bisect each other, well, bisecting diagonals, that's a parallelogram property. So I could get rid of any choice that's a parallelogram, leaving me just with a trapezoid. Number eight says, we have a quadrilateral, and it tells us it's a rectangle. I know it looks like a square, but remember, squares are rectangles, too. It says, use the information to solve for x and determine the length of LU. Well, if KU is 3x plus 3, and UM is 4x minus 4, well, I know a rectangle is a parallelogram. Therefore, these two segments are the same, because the diagonals bisect each other. So I can just set them equal to each other. Do some quick solving. Use those algebra skills you learned last year. And you get x equals 7. Well, if x is 7, I can say ku is equal to 3 times 7 plus 3, so 24. I could say um, which is the same, is also 24. Now, if I want to find the length of LU, that's not even one of the pieces that I was given. But a special property of rectangles is their diagonals are the same size. So if I have a rectangle and I have diagonals drawn, if these two are both 24, so are these two because they're the same size and they also bisect each other. So LU is 24. Number nine says that we have a quadrilateral. It's an isosceles trapezoid. Now, one of the things that we know about trapezoids is the consecutive angles that go from base to base. So S and R, they're supplementary. They're going to add to 180. So if I take 180 and subtract 51, that's going to be 129 degrees. That's a single here. Well, in an isosceles trapezoid, isosceles, the base angles are also the same. So that means angle R and angle Q are the same size. So I get 28x minus 11 equals 129. Add 11. 28x is equal to 140. So x equals 5. I just wanted x, so I'm done. Number 10, which quadrilateral has diagonals that do not bisect each other? Well, if it doesn't have quadrilateral, uh, if it doesn't have bisecting diagonals, that means it cannot be a parallelogram. So get rid of anything that's a parallelogram. Well, last thing we have there is that isosceles trapezoid. Hopefully this video helped. Um, if you're um, having trouble with this, just make sure that you are um, studying all of the notes that we gave you at the beginning of lesson one and two. All right, all those properties are going to keep coming back. And they're going to haunt you if you don't study them for your proofs that are coming up in the next few lessons. Good luck with your homework.